All right, beautiful people. I just finished flying the DCS, uh, not DCS F14, the Keepler and India Fox Echo collaboration of the F14 product they just released. I picked it up for $34, guys, and let me tell you, it is a bargain. It is a steal for $34. They could have easily asked for 50 or 60 or whatever price that other people do saying, hey, we have fully fledged model aircraft. Even though there's no weapon systems that actually work, uh, the other systems in the aircraft are just modeled so well. The paint, the chips, the wear and tear, the feel of the aircraft, the sounds of the aircraft. Guys, I'm telling you, this is just one of these aircraft that I love flying now because of how good it sounds. When I'm flying in VR, I feel so much more immersed when the sounds are working on par with it. the visuals and everything is just even. It's really nice. There's other products available that have F-14s and other aircraft, but when it comes to the F-14 Tomcat, Tomcat, this is the A variant, and Dino did an amazing job. Dino, Dino, I call him Dino. Dino did an amazing job on this one, guys, and they knocked it out of the park, so go ahead, support them. I'll leave a link to their website. I'm also gonna leave a link to, if I find it, the manual, guys, that comes with a manual. Read the manual. Don't do what I did. I tried to fly without not knowing anything, and it sucked. It was kind of crazy. I didn't know what was going on. Um, the nose wheel steering was off, the flaps, the engines, the startup procedure. So go ahead, read the manual. This is one of those aircraft you're gonna wanna get familiarized with. You could always hit Control E, but um, anyways, let's go for a flight. We're gonna be flying over Tampa, South Florida here. It's, or not South Florida, but Tampa, Florida, uh, where I live and work as an air traffic controller. So let's jump right into this, guys. Here we go, hope you enjoy. Okay, fellow pilots, here we go. We are gonna take up the new F-14A released uh, by Heat Blur in collaboration with India Fox Echo. And guys, look, let me just be very clear about this aircraft. It's amazing. It's it's just one of these things, guys. There's aircraft that uh, are okay. There's some that are great, and there's some that are amazing. This aircraft is phenomenal. It really blows everything else out of the water. The detail, when we look around right here, let's just take a quick moment before we roll. Let's look around this canopy. Look at the edges here. Everything is so detailed. The wear and tear, the buttons, the levers, the gauges, there's depth to everything. It's not as if it's a bunch of 2D stickers placed here. Guys, I, I, I'm no expert in this, but I'll tell you what, this plane is amazing. Now, I don't know a lot about, a lot about this aircraft, but if you want someone who does, I'm a link him below. My buddy Belgio, he's the F-14 extraordinaire, and he gave it two thumbs up. So let's roll here. We'll get airborne. We'll keep chatting. And we're at runway 505 five at McDill Air Force Bay in Tampa, Florida. McDill Air Force Bay or base? What did I say? Let's go with McDill Air Force Base. And here we go, boys. We are rolling. All right. Looking pretty good. Afterburner's on. Wow. I mean, you can almost feel it throwing it, you back in your seat. There it is. Positive brake. Tap the wheels. The wheel brake. Gear up. My gosh, this is beautiful. <laughs> All right, so I started with 10,000 pounds of fuel. I'm at 9,000. Okay, I'm at Air Force Base beneath me there. That is impressive. Just the level of detail in this sim, guys. And the fact that now we have this level of fidelity brought to us by New Fox Echo and his amazing work. Guys, look, this aircraft is one of those that... You know, people wonder, well, why fly an F-14 in Microsoft Flight Sim when we have DCS? This is pointless. Look, this is a stepping stone. There's going to be people who fly this aircraft and are going to say, you know what? That was amazing. I would love to engage in combat with the F-14 or F-16. And the fact that they get to experience this here in Microsoft Flight Sim is going to pull them right into DCS. So there's a reason to have these fighter jets in Microsoft Flight Sim. That is so cool, guys. I just love the fact that all these different buttons in here work, and you can fool around. And he has a manual. So if you guys want to properly learn uh, how to fly this aircraft, there's definitely a manual for it. So read it, and that way you take full advantage of it. 
we even have weapons available to us if I load the correct weight uh, on the pylons we will get weapons now I was just making them up and I was able to find uh, sidewinders so I don't know if there's more available to us than that now this is the F14A which from what Drew was telling me has a simpler system as far as I think two things one of them is the HUD the second one is if we put a lot of GPS waypoints, it's not going to have a super fancy uh, system like other aircraft would. But at this time, I do know where I'm at, I think. We're over here at St. Pete. We got a helicopter flying around. We're going to go ahead and... Buzz. No, don't eject. Oh. All right, so he almost ejected. Like I said, he will eject. And when he ejects, you don't see a parachute or anything, which that would be really cool. But he will pop the canopy and you will not have somebody in your back seat. But check out this iconic shadow right here, guys. Imagine if you were at the beach and you saw this. Yes, that would be so cool. Wow. This bird is a joy. Another thing I find, this bird handles really well at low speed. So let's get it configured here. We're going to shoot a visual approach into Albert Witted Runway 7. It's uh, 11 o'clock. They're just on the other side of the stadium. I think we see the beacon. There's multiple beacons. I think there's actually a hospital and the airport. So I don't know why we see multiple beacons, though. That technically shouldn't be that way. Now, dropping the gear. All right, speed break out. Let me see if I can kind of recenter this camera a little bit better. Oh, uh, there we go. Thank you, Jester. I'll tell you what, having Jester call things out like that, sync rate, speed, Fuel. All right, so he just said the speed 220 flaps up. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my spoiler. 900 feet. Now I'm getting again some micro stutters. It's it's not the aircraft guys. It's really my sim. But let's see. We got gear down. Feet. Flaps full. Clear to land. 500 feet. Doing buck sixty here on short final. Three hundred fifty feet. Two hundred fifty. Uh oh. Uh oh. Two hundred. One hundred fifty feet. Forty. Oh wow. It's so funny. I actually thought. I was higher than I was, and I think that's in that's in part due to how big this aircraft is. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I, I still have more room. Although that wasn't a super great approach, but a little touch and go. There's a St. Pete Pier right there. Now we're gonna go over do uh, touch and go at uh, PIE St. Pete International. And make our way back to McDill. By the way, guys, if you don't know, my name's Jose. I'm an air traffic controller over there at Tampa Tower Tracon. Hello, Tampa ATC. And I'm a huge VR flight sim nerd. And that's why I create this content. Because I enjoy sharing my point of view, my perspective, and just really geeking out. Now, uh, I'm looking for the field. There's the bridge. Uh, okay, I got it. Here it is. It's right at the end of the bridge. Now we have a hot air balloon right here. Let's go ahead and say hello. Because Fox 2. I guess that technically would be a Fox 2, right? Shh. Yo. <laughs> All right, let's let's check this out. We're looking pretty good. Um, yeah. Let me pull myself. Oops. 
That was my rudder. Pull myself a little bit closer, which I don't think I'm fully centered. All right, there we go. This feels like I'm centered now. Now, again, guys, this aircraft is so stable, low speeds, it's impressive. Very detailed, very good on FPS and performance. Any stuttering I'm having, it's really, I think, due to my scenery mods and some stuff I'm running. So we're at 900 feet, we're doing 200 knots. Uh, do I get my trim set up on here? I'm gonna say that in front of us is Allegiant. Allegiant, 1075, on approach. Four hundred feet. Very nice. Three hundred fifty. Putting the tags away. Three hundred. All right, Jester, keep calling it out. Two hundred fifty feet. Two hundred feet. One hundred. Forty. <laughs> that was awesome. Now, look at this, guys. We're going to go ahead and follow Legion in because I know this bird can fly nice and slow. Uh, what do we got over there? Legion 1075 from Roanoke. Is that Virginia? West Virginia? We got Legion 971. Now, typically, these flights will be flying over the river on what's called the RNAV Virtual Approach, except at this time at night, I guess they're going to be, um, yeah, they're going to be flying the ILS. So, this does make sense. Anybody else I know out there? Nope. All right, uh, we got a Legion inside. We'll maintain those separation. Tower 2-2. Two -two. Let's see. Now here, I'm gonna pull tight. There we go, get right on him, a little afterburner, make sure we don't sink. Little nose down attitude. I forget what program I'm running to do this. Um, this might be FS traffic. Has an easy jet livery. That's right, we'll take it. It's an Airbus. Close enough for government work. Let's see how he's doing. Good job, good job, AI pilot. Oh, a little, little hard, but we'll take it. <laughs> All right. Joker. All right, so we're looking at. Oh, 5,800 pounds of fuel. Bingo's at 4,000. We're doing pretty good. And we're going to fly uh, this way. Let us go over Tampa International Airport. Check out where I work as an air traffic controller. And, uh, yeah, so I've been here now about six months. I just came up from Miami. I spent the first 15 years of my career at Miami International Airport. And uh, it was a blast. So at Miami, I get to work both in the tower and excuse me, in the Tracon. I get to work Miami Tower and Tracon, and I'll tell you what, man, those, I feel like everyone says they work with the best controllers in the world, but uh, the talent at Miami is really unique. The stuff that, that we have to do, the planes we have to move around, it's it's just, it's awesome. You know, it really is. Uh, we're currently here looking pretty good. We're going to fly runway 1028 centerline. Not that it matters, we should just be able to fly midfield, but that's what we do. 
Oh, getting some stutters. I always get stutters when I approach these airports. That's where the Tampa Bay Bucks play, I believe. Is that it? Yep. Downtown Tampa. And then we got Peter O'Knight right here at the end. Two o'clock low. South Tampa just off my right hand side behind me. And if you guys remember that C-17 that landed um, on that short runway was right here. All right, so we're looking good. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the speed brakes. So that C-17 landed runway 22 instead of the runway in front of me, which is much longer. Runway 23. All right, we are doing good. We're gonna go ahead, drop our gear, and get the flaps going. So guys, I'm gonna do just an S turn here while we descend, and just give you my thoughts on this aircraft. Listen, this aircraft is so detailed. It runs well here in virtual reality. I'm currently using a Reverb G2 paired with an RTX 4090 and a 12900K, but you don't need that to run this aircraft. It's been optimized very well. Other people have been commenting on it and sharing uh, the same uh, findings on, on Facebook and YouTube and Discord. So check it out. Now, real fast, guys. This Saturday, we're having a group flight flying together, hosted by VR Flight Sim Guy, Bell Geo, and myself. So please join us for that. Links are going to be posted below uh, for whoever wants to join. Check out on my Discord. Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be a blast. And let's see how we do here. We got a bit of a crosswind. Four white, two high. Fuel bingo. Fuels bingo. So, we'll see how we do here. Ah, okay, so, I keep on coming hot on all my approaches, and you know what? I think I kind of stalled out on that one. So, I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, it wasn't too terrible, but I know I can do better. I'll have to talk to Drew and maybe get some tips for him on speed and different things. So... Now, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this flight. I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. And let me know what you guys think. Is this an aircraft that you're going to pick up? And if India Fox Echo could make another aircraft, bring it over from DCS. What aircraft would you want to see? Let me know. I'm curious. Catch you guys later. Peace out.